<clears throat> and we're back. This is uh, Professor Nick Carbonaro here at Long Beach City College. You can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Professor Nick Carbonaro. You can find me on uh, Twitter at NJ Carbonaro. You can email me ncarbonaro at lbcc.edu. So hello everybody. Once again, we are back with another edition of our live stream. Our live stream virtual office hours. And what we're going to do for the first couple minutes on here, sorry for being late, I just want to get everything uh, settled down and, and squared away. Before we uh, start, I want to introduce everybody to the, uh, I want to introduce to the people out there that are uh, new to watching this. Maybe you're in my late starting classes, my personal finance and, and um, digital and social media class. So what I wanted to do today, right before we get into what I'm, I want to do, um, the majority of it's going to be spent as a test review for my introduction to business class. My introduction to business class has a test tomorrow, so I'm going to do a little test review on here and they could chat in your questions. And so if you're new to this YouTube live stream, what you can do is you come on here and um, as I go over uh, the, the coursework for today or this week and, and kind of give you a little update, you can go on to the, uh, onto the live chat portion and actually chat in any questions that you have. Chat in any of those questions that you have that's relating to the, to the class. So if you are in my introduction to business class, hold on, wait a second because we're gonna get there. I'm kind of introducing my, my new students in my 12-week uh, session. This is the start of the third week online as well. And so for those that, that started in the 12-week session, I'm gonna start with the introduction to business, uh, I mean not the introduction to business, the personal financial management portion of it. <laughs> And we're, we're going to go over there and we're going to watch uh, the personal financial management portion. I want to show you exactly what our modules are and then in about a minute we'll, uh, we'll go in and we'll, uh, we'll, do our, uh, we'll do our test review. So if you look over here with modules, and let me make sure you see it. This is what your page should look like when you jump to our personal financial management site. It has all the information here, all my contact information there, everything that we're doing there. And it'll show you exactly which weeks we've done. Weeks are already shaded, the ones that have been done. Now we get into here. And so as you can see, as you can see that after this week, this is this is a big week, this week right here. Um, this is a big week right here. What we're gonna be doing is for the rest of the week, for the rest of the time, you see it's only one chapter after this. We need to get caught up. We need to set the foundations for the class. So. If you could bear with it these first three weeks, the rest of the way is a lot more simpler. And you can see that. You can see all that, all of what we have to do. So that's the first thing, right? So for the personal financial management class, you click on modules. Up top, I added a thing called internship job opportunities and scholarships. That'll be there for your, for your benefit. Maybe some positions apply to you. Let me know about them and I'll, and I'll send your resume to the right people. Import information, important information, your syllabus, your course outline, you purchase the textbook, how to set up your mind tap, my YouTube page, my website, the full book on, on how to uh, access the full book is right there. And then each week, right? We've already done this. These are already, there's, there's the assignments overdue for all these, right? So can't access those. However, this week, week three is up, chapters five and six. And you can see week four, it says it's locked. It'll unlock at, at 10 16 at 12 a.m. and you can see what's what's going on with each one so um, and if you've already done it you've already done it and so what I wanted to to make you aware of is that tomorrow is the last day for the drop deadline for my 12 week classes make sure if you're not active on the classes that you're that that you drop um, I went through today and kind of dropped through dropped some people however um, it, it you may need to drop on your own because some of you did a couple of assignments here, a couple of assignments there, and I don't know whether or not you're, you're able, that you're fully in this class or not, but the drop date is tomorrow for my 12 week classes as well. And so let me go over to the social media site so you can see exactly what we're doing for that one. And maybe you're on here in my introduction to business class, hold up in about two minutes, we'll go over our, our, our test. But um, for those that are on here for, for my other classes, uh, and let's say you've never taken a digital and social media class. This may be a perfect opportunity for you to see what I expect for you in our digital and social media class. And so I'm going to put this on a 
student view in a second and then I'll pop it up on the screen so you can see it. So this is what it looks like when you log into the introduction to the digital and social media page for our uh, online online session. Again, same way it says please click on modules to see your weekly assignments. So you click on modules. I have all my contact information there, my social media sites. Go to modules. Again, internship opportunities, and when you click those, it, it opens and shuts them. So you could open and shut them. Then it goes getting started. So you've all watched that and got started with it. We've all done week one. Now we're on week three. So we just finished that, and I'll be grading those this week. Um, I'll be grading those assignments this week. And then watch number th watch week three. It's social responsibility, privacy, ethics, and etiquette of social media. And so. As you can see right here, as you can see right here, this is a little, this is a, this is a pretty important week, right? We have two videos that you're going to watch, Social Responsibility, Privacy, Privacy and Ethics Lecture. We have another one, Watch Nine Essential Social Media Etiquette Rules for Business Lecture. We have some readings right there. And then we have the assignment so we have a uh, do free speech for safety ethic for safety versus ethics uh, lesson so there's a fine line between safety and ethics and so um, safety ethics and free speech right there's there's a huge divide there um, one person's security is another person's censorship so we, we talked about that we have a discussion with that and the second one we do there's a great uh, vice story a vice uh, the, the show vice did a great uh, episode on cyber war and talked about the great meme war and how memes can effectively change outcomes of political campaigns, how memes can effectively change wars and cyber war and stuff like that. So um, that's a great video for you to for you to watch on there. And then uh, lastly is the know your terms of service. So that's where you go through and you actually choose one and actually read the terms of service for for each uh, for for each platform out there. So. This should be a very good week before we head into content creation, which is going to be the next weeks and then actually application. So for the first three weeks, we're really diving into how to do those things. And so let's, uh, and so far, does anybody have any questions that are from those classes? Um, does anybody have any questions from those classes before I start the GBiz 5 um, test review. Does anybody have any questions for that? If you have any questions, chat them in there. Uh, you could email them to me. I'm live right now, so I'll pop up the email on my other screen so nobody sees your email and I'll read it out loud if it pertains to, to the group. Anybody have that before we, uh, before we move on? All right, so let's get started on our GBiz5 test review. And I could tell you that tomorrow for our test, you will see 30 questions. And I'm actually scrolling through the questions right now to make sure that everything is, is covered in our class. So we have our test review tomorrow. We have our test tomorrow. Uh, number one. Make sure you make your note card three by five, handwritten front back. Number two, use your study guide to make that note card and to study it. You can't use the study guide on the test, but use the study guide. Number three, I got my office mate coming in. Um, and so make sure you make your note card, make sure you use your study guide, make sure you uh, bring your device because tomorrow we're gonna be doing it off a of top hat. So make sure when we do top hat tomorrow, um, it will start at 9:10. Our top hat. So remember, the first 20 minutes of class, I'm actually giving you time to work in your group projects. Okay. So those first tw uh, 20 minutes are for group projects. So test will start at 9:10. It'll automatically load up on your top hat. There will be an attendance code given. So you better match the attendance code with the test. Otherwise, you don't get credit for the test um, and for participation for actually being there. So let's get started. So uh, when you're looking through the test, it's on chapters four, five, and fourteen. You could expect uh, you could expect roughly, you know, 10, 10, uh, 10 questions from each chapter. So chapters four, five, and fourteen, and chapters four was on uh, business ownership, right? So 
let's let's just go through this test. So I'm going to look at some questions and see which ones should be uh, should be studied a little bit more. So um, know what the simplest form of business ownership is. We went through all the types of business ownership. We have sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation as the three biggest ones. Then we have syndicate, um, franchising, and chapter five. So what is the simplest form of business ownership called, right? And if you want to, I mean, you could chat in these these answers. And um, if if you want to use this as kind of like a study session, you're more than welcome to do that. I won't I won't validate the answers or not, but you could you could check you could put them in there. Uh, define what unlimited liability is. Know the difference between a sole proprietorship and a partnership. So on our top hat, we define both of those. Know the differences between them. And with a partnership, know the different types of partnerships that are out there. Know in a corporate setting all the, all the things that are listed on our top hat page for a corporation, like what a stock is, what a dividend is. Define those, be able to understand what those are. Understand the financial benefit of, of doing a corporation and, and why is it, how could it benefit a company financially when they're trying to start out? Know which type of specialty corporation restricts the amount of stockholders that are able to, uh, able to be part of that corporation. Define what a joint venture is. Define what a joint venture is. Maybe give an example of it. Define what a small business is and, and what, what it means to be a small business and um, the, the break down the definition that we told you in class what a small business is and you'll be fine. What are the different categories of, uh, of, of businesses? We did this as a top hat question, so you may want to review your top hat question. Um, we did it as a liquor store. We defined it and we said, okay, 7-Eleven uh, is considered what type of business? And then I broke it down in class and told you each one. We broke it down. It's that graph that's on top hat. So make sure you go review that graph on that pie chart that's on our top hat that says what type of business um, each one is in. There's three general categories of businesses. And be able to understand what each one is. So. Um, like if you move goods from producer to consumer, what what type of thing is that? So um, we got one question just came in. Hi, Mr. C, can you go over the three places a franchise can get help with running his or her franchise, please? So we're, we're gonna get to that question, Kenita, I promise you. We're gonna, we're gonna get down to that question. So um, where where that franchise can, can get help from and let me since you just asked it right now let me let me skip down there and I'll go and uh, I'll go find that and maybe I reworded it differently on the study guide but um, in class we we briefly went over at the very end of class the difference between a franchise e and a franchise or and so look at uh, let's say you owned Pyology, right? Let's say you were the franchise E of Pyology, meaning uh, you bought into a Pyology store, right? So if you needed help, who's the main person? Let, let's say your franchise is having trouble. Who are you most likely to go to to get those answers, right? Who are you most likely to go to to get those answers if you're the franchise E? right? And the correct answer is your franchisor because they're the ones that support you, right? Go look at those definitions on franchisee versus franchisor in our top hat. It's like the last two slides of chapter five. Um, and understand that the franchisee depends on the franchisor for marketing, for information, for, for skill set, all that other type, all that other type of stuff. So when you go to McDonald's and you see the, the McRib is back sign, signage, right? That's not the franchisee doing it, that's the franchise or sending the franchisee that information. So if you're a franchise and you're having a little bit of trouble, the, the, the you're most likely to go back to the franchise or 
for that advice. And hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. I'm not sure if I accidentally put on the study guide, Nate, go over the, the three places a franchise can get help with. Um, there are different organizations out there. There's the Small Business Association, the SBA. Um, there's Restaurant Consultants, Chamber of Commerce, but normally you would go to the franchise or to, uh, to get that information out there, so. A good question. If anybody else has any other questions, chat them in there and we'll be, feel free to answer them. So again, know those different types of industries and be able to identify them and apply them. So if you had like a word, a word uh, problem that said, um, not just defining what the industry that's concerned with X, Y, and Z, what would it be? But if I gave you an actual example and I said, uh, uh, Billy decided to start his own business uh, uh, selling, selling food at a liquor store, um, what type of business would that be classified as? Something like that. And we did one of those examples in class. So go look back at your top hat, see if you got it right, see if you got it wrong, and then work on that. Which state, uh, which of the, um, know what uh, small businesses bring to the table. So this was those slides where we went over, where we went Netflix versus Blockbuster, the McDonald's versus all the other little burger chains, uh, the Costco we used as an example with a lock with Los Alamitos lock and key. Go look back at those slides and under really understand how does the small business serve the big business and, and what's true about small businesses versus versus bigger businesses out there. Um, define what a business plan is, what a business plan is. Know the franchisee and the franchisor and the difference between those two. Uh, what chapter is what on Valeria? What chapter is that on? What for the for the small business? Small business is chapter five. Sorry. So the question was, what chapter is that on? And I'm guessing you were what I was just going over is stuff from chapter five. So when it was talking about what type of businesses there are and classification of businesses where to find uh, which which of the follow like statements that are true about small businesses and defining what small businesses are. That's chapter five in your book, chapter five on the on the top hat that's on your thing. Yeah, perfect. An individual uh, that grants the license versus the individual that receives the license in a franchise agreement. Again, that's in chapter five. Again, just the, the power of small business. What are what are some things that small business does? How do they how do they uh, benefit society? And we went over all those with technology and competition and innovation, all those different types of things that we go over on the powerpoints and and in the and in the class discussions is on there. And then we get to chapter fourteen, right? This this whole section was chapter four or five, and then we skip to fourteen because fourteen is all about business ownership. So chapter fourteen is. Um, social media. So social media consists of uh, what, right? We defined it in class, give that definition. And that's not in a top hat. We didn't do a top hat for that one. We did the sway. So I put that in our top hat. If you go to top hat, it's listed as a pages. It's listed as pages on there, um, but also on our canvas site. And let me see if I could pull that up real quick and then I'll show it to you in just one second. On our canvas site, I put our sway up there. So let me give a student view and then I'll show my screen real quick. So if you go to our canvas site right here and you click on modules, right here in the learning materials, right there, chapter 14 lecture, and you open that up, open in a new chapter, in a new tab, and it will load up, right? So what does social media, what is social media's definition, right? That's something right there, right? So right down there, so good. Uh, 
So define what social media is. Know the different categories of social media tools discussed in lecture. So on that same uh, sway, there's certain things that I say, these are social media tools. So know the different ones, right? We went over them. We went over blogs. That was the first one. We went over Urban Outfitter blogs. So that's one tool. We went over media sharing sites. That's your YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, anything like that. There's your podcasts. I showed the Marvel Movie News podcasts up there. There's social media ratings like your, um, like your uh, TripAdvisor, Yelp, Fandango, Rotten Tomatoes, all that type of stuff. So go look up there. Go look at those. Uh, I did an example in class about uh, Doritos, a specific example in class. And I actually am using that example in class on that we used in class, that we discussed in class for the test. So if you remember that type of thing and what we talked about in class about how uh, Doritos can use a Twitter campaign to help it out. And there's different categories. There's different business objectives to social media, right? Know those business objectives to social media. And so if you look back here, and I'll give you a little hint again because we did this really fast on, um, on uh, Thursday. Social media business objectives. This is what you'll be looking at, right? Understand which each one is, right? Now, if you look at social media communities, that's a tool. Social media communities is a business objective. It's not a tool, okay? That's a little hint. Social media communities is a business objective. It's not a social media tool. So understand what each one of those mean. We have uh, which social media, like know which ones are there, like what are not considered social media sharing sites or what is considered a social media sharing site. And that's just knowing each one of those, those platforms, right? And the book tells you, and think about, the, think about our examples that we use in class about what each one does, right? So Twitter, you share media on it. Instagram, you share media on it. Um, a podcast, you don't share media on it, but I mean, you share media, but it's not called a media sharing site. A, a podcast is a podcast. You're, you're, you're projecting your own views with a video or, or a voice audio, and then having people uh, comment on it and share that. That's what makes it social. Yelp, for example, you're giving you reviews. TripAdvisor, you're giving reviews. So those would be social media rating sites, like a, like a Yelp or whatever. So make sure we, we understand what's going on with that. If uh, know the, the business, okay, so we got uh, Jasmine asked, will we have to define each social tool on the exam? You won't have to define each one, but a question may occur where you need to choose the right one. Like I give you, a, I give you an example and say, Facebook is, a ty is what type of social media tool? And you have to know based off of the different types of tools we discussed in class, which one is it? Is it a media sharing site? Is it a social rating site? Is it a blog? Is it a podcast? To that extent, you'll have to define it. You won't need to define each one. I'm not gonna give you like, Twitter is this, Facebook is this, Instagram is this, Yelp is this. I'm not gonna do that. However, there will be questions where you have to apply it, meaning you you, you go on those sites to do what, right? And that's social, um, that's the different types of tools that there are. So you don't need to know every tool because my gosh, there's, hundreds of social media sites out there that would be classified under one of those four or five categories. So um, just to be able to differentiate between the two, that's what you're really worried, focus, that's what you really should focus on. Um, understand why businesses would use an e-business for different objectives, right? Objectives of e-business. So um, let's, say, let's say a company decided to go on monster.com and put a, put a job posting on there. What are they using the internet for, right? What are they using the internet for in that sense, right? So understand those types of things. Define what a blog is. So out of all those, define what a blog is. What are Google and Yahoo? Uh, we didn't discuss that in class just because I think it's super easy. I mean, I asked you, like, what do you do to go to Yahoo, right? What, what do you use Yahoo for? What do you, well, maybe you don't use Yahoo anymore, but what do you use Google for, right? What do you use Google, main, main point of Google, right? Let's and I'll and I'll and let me show you, let me show you real quick. 
to kind of give it, I'll, I'll kind of give you this answer. So this is Google's website. When you type in google.com, that's what pops up, right? That's what pops up right there. So I hope you can tell me what Google's main job is by looking at a Google website and knowing this is what Google does. Yes, they have Gmail up here. Yes, they have images. But what is Google's main focus, right? And I don't know how much more clearer I could get this right here. What is Google's more main focus, right? Main focus, main focus. What is Google's main focus out there? Another one that we uh, that we went over in class, but for a little bit, and I said, hey, you know what? Um, if you go to the restaurant, you are blanking your food production. If you go and have a lawn service come to your house and maintain the landscape of your of your property, you are blanking your lawn service. If you go and get your clothes sent to the dry cleaners, you are blanking, right, blank, meaning fill in the blank, you are blanking your clothing service, right? All, the, all, those, all those types of things out there. Know what that word is that I keep saying blanking for. Lastly, know the difference between a B2B consumer or a B2B business, business to business, versus B2C, which is business to consumer, right? There's a main difference between B2B and B2C, right? And not just defining it, but if I gave you a, a whole a word, uh, if I gave you a, a scenario and I said, they do this, they do this, they do this, this would be classified as a B2C model or a B2B model. I'm not gonna say, um, uh, and know what B2C is, right? And I even explained it in class one day. B2C, it's not business to customer. It's business to consumer, right? Business to consumer because another business could be your customer, right? But another business can't be your consumer. They don't consume your product, but they can be your customer, right? Customer just means somebody's buying something from you. So if Starbucks has a cup vendor that they buy their cups from and then imprint the Starbucks logo on it, Starbucks's cup vendor would be their customer, right? They would be their customer. Starbucks would be a customer to that person. They're purchasing their, their cups. Now we wouldn't classify that as a business to customer model. We classify that as a B2B model, a business to business or a B2C. So remember the acronym. Don't look at the long words because you will get confused. I guarantee you I will put business to customer on there and some of you will get tricked, tricked up on that. So B2C, business to consumer, B2B, business to business, right? And it doesn't matter whether they're online or, or face to face, a company can be an online business to business or an online business to consumer. When you go to amazon.com and you buy a product from another company's Amazon page, you are doing business to consumer, B2C. That biz, you're buying a product from that business. That business is selling something to you, the consumer. However, if you went on the same thing and you went online and you were a t-shirt company and you needed to buy sources of t-shirt and you bought your, your plain white t-shirts that you're gonna screen print from some company in China off of AliExpress or, or Amazon or eBay or one of those places, you are engaging in a B2B model, a B2B transaction. And so uh, know the difference between B2B and B2C. And so for those that, that have been watching this, we're, we're coming up on a half an hour, uh, half an hour stream, which is pretty long, but I hope this was beneficial to you. I hope this was, uh, this was, this was good for you. This post will be kept up. Um, until right before class and probably when you guys are taking the test tomorrow, I'll delete it just because I don't want the, the, the review session to be out there after the, after the exam. But uh, hope this was beneficial. We have about a minute left. I'll, I'll kind of stop talking for a second, let you chat in. If you have any chat uh, questions there, please chat them in now and I'll give you guys about a minute to do that. If not, I will basically uh, shut down the stream in about a minute and close it up. So. You have about a minute to, to write your things in there and I'll try to answer as many questions as we can.
good. We got another question. Uh, will we have to know about spams, cookies, etc.? cetera? Uh, there is not a specific question on spamming on here. I think I took it out because we didn't have a lot of time to go talk about it. Um, but uh, there is no specific question regarding spam and and uh, and cookies and, and defining what they are. So no, uh, you can you can kind of uh, cross that off the list. Alrighty, so that seems like about it. Uh, if you have any other questions, please let me know. Comment below. Maybe we'll see some comments. Maybe people can answer the questions. Uh, email me if you have any issues. Tweet me. No problem at all. I'm, that's why I do these, Val Valeria. Sorry, I'm a little tired. My mind's kind of slipping right now. Um, but uh, no problem. That's why I do these live streams. And hey, we got seven people watching continuously. We had ups and downs. Five came in. One came in. Three came in. So throughout the entire uh, entire process, I believe we had watching now at one at seven. Um, so I mean that's seven more than than that came in my office during this entire time. So that's pretty good. Uh, if you have any other questions, again, uh, come see me. Otherwise, we will uh, we'll catch you later, and I'll see you tomorrow during your test tomorrow. All right, have a good one. Good luck studying.